Lebanon is pointing its finger towards Israel over the simultaneous pager blasts. However, this is not the first time that Iran and its axis of resistance has blamed Israel of breaching its security. In 2010, Stuxnet, a malicious computer virus widely believed to have been developed by the United States and Israel, was used to attack a uranium enrichment facility at Iran's Natanz nuclear site. This was the first publicly known cyber attack on industrial machinery. Two years later, an Iranian nuclear scientist, Mostafa Ahmadi Roshan, was killed by a bomb placed on his car by a motorcyclist in Tehran. Iran blamed Israel for the attack. In the year 2022, excuse me, in the year 2021, Iran again accused Israel for the assassination of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, who was seen by Western intelligence services as a mastermind of a covert Iranian program to develop nuclear weapons capabilities. This year, Israel launched an airstrike killing Hezbollah commander Fuad Shukir in Beirut, Lebanon. This came hours before the assassination of Hamas's political leader Ismail Haniye in Iran. Tehran and its axis of resistance holds Israel responsible for the killing of Hamas's chief. Dr. Avner Cohen is a professor of non-proliferation and terrorism studies, Middlebury Institute, and is now joining us live from California, the United States. Professor Cohen, good to see you and welcome to the program. What do you make of the tactics that Israel is employing to target groups that they consider a threat, especially infiltrating or even breaching their communication networks and devices? Well, it's... To me, it sounds like unprecedented operation. Whoever did it, and presumably Israel, uh, the volume, the depth, the uh, timing uh, is incredible. The fact that the entire network of telephone communication system, and as the previous speaker says, uh, after uh, Hezbollah started to, sus to be uh, very suspicious about using a mobile phone, uh, they moved to the other technology, previous technology, beeper or pagers, and that entire technology, uh, somewhere at least 2,000 uh, subscribers uh, in a short time, in about 20 or so minutes. Uh, so the scope and the, uh, the, the, the magnitude of that operation is amazing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a free uh, day to, to, to start a full operation that would follow, that's an open question. Mm -hmm. It's also an operation that is under the radar in the sense that there is, even though it's a facade, but there is, nobody takes responsibility, there is non-acknowledgement, and there is some space, even though that space seems a facade, of plausible uh, deniability. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's clear that the intention right now is to have something which is below the radar, even though it's very much felt and noted all over, and it has some practical uh, impact. Uh, I do not think that in the history of that kind of operation, we have known, we have seen an operation in such a short time that is able to reach out so many operative of one organization, essentially so many members of that network. Right. It's just amazing. Uh, Professor Cohen, Iran and Lebanon are almost certain that Israel has been coordinating or even planning some of these attacks for the longest yeah. time. Some even claiming that it was before the war in Gaza began. And with that being said, what will be the impact of this latest incident in the tensions between Israel and Hezbollah? Because they've not declared a war, but there's already tensions brewing. As you know, for the last uh, 11 or so months since October 7th, uh, Hezbollah has joined Hamas uh, in attacking from the north of Israel. Essentially, nearly 100,000 Israeli had to be evacuated and cannot live in their homes. Uh, the Israeli government, uh, who was trying to resolve this issue for many months with diplomatic uh, means, primarily the United States and to a degree France, 
uh, make indications in the last few days that they come to the point of no patients anymore. Uh, there were consultations uh, in Israel in the last few days on this issue, what Israel should take, the, the what kind of next action should take. Mm -hmm. So that could be not just warning, but the beginning of a new phase in this in this in this uh, confrontation in an effort perhaps to start and in this way it's to paralyze the entire communication system or much of the communication system of Hezbollah among its operatives mm -hmm. i mean the fact that over 2000 people were able to be affected that those means were exploded those means of communication were exploded mm -hmm. it's uh, practically speaking it's a major disruption to Hezbollah communication system among its, its people, among its operatives. Mm -hmm. What will happen next? One can just guess. All right. If you're just joining us, the, we are talking about the latest uh, development from Lebanon, where we do understand that over 2,000 people or members of the Hezbollah uh, militant group have been injured in this pager attack. And we do understand from the health ministry in Lebanon, which says that eight people have so far died following this blast uh, of the pages in Lebanon. And I've been talking to Dr. Avna Cohen, who's a professor of non-proliferation and terrorism studies, Middlebury Institute, and he has been talking to us from California, the United States. Professor Cohen, thank you. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.